Good job we are leaving. The wind has arrived. Time to go. It looks like it's going to be just a Genoa cell again because it's pretty strong. Not sure it is a good job that we're leaving. This anchorage is windy, but it's very protected. I think we're going to get wet on this sail. Most of it is downwind, so we should be okay. But then we have a nasty little leg where we have to turn up into the channel uh, against all this. So uh, we'll see how that goes. It's definitely will be interesting sail, let me tell you that. Previously on Sailing Bohemia, we completed our overnight passage to Isla Carmen. It's really started to howl now! We explored a spooky shipwreck and found a picture-perfect beach. We are back in the paradise. <laughs> it's going to be a tough one this afternoon. And we found plenty of boat chores to keep us busy in paradise. We're moving quite fast with uh, just about 90% of the jib out right now. Uh, so I'm a bit reluctant to put it all out uh, in case we get overpowered quickly. Uh, it's gonna be a very fast sail, I think. Maybe four hours max. He promised fast sail. That means only one thing. Fishy, fishy. Come in. Six point two knots, just with ninety percent of the Genoa out. This is amazing. We always try to move the boom when it's not doing anything useful uh, to unshade the solar panels and bring in the amps. Because it's all about the amps and how many times I opened the fridge door. As you can tell, we sometimes have a power struggle on Bohemia, so I always win. We're a very power-hungry vessel. Today's sail was only a 22-mile hop to Puerto Escondido. But little did we know what the weather had in store for us. Wow, we have never ever sailed this fast with just the Genoa out. It's insane. We just clocked in 7.8 knots and we only pulled out about 90% of the Genoa. It's insane. I'm a bit worried what is going to happen when we get to the channel in between the islands. We could get wet. The wind continued to build as we passed parallel to the mountainous shore of Isla Carmen. Each time we thought it had peaked, every gap in the mountains brought us stronger and stronger winds. When the apparent wind hit 40 knots and stayed there, we began to wonder whether the unsheltered upwind leg of the passage would be safe. Are we continuing? I'm not sure. I think maybe we should just uh, drop the anchor there, at least for shelter. Where? Back where we came from. 
we decided to cut our losses before we got too far from the anchorage. So we rolled in the Genoa, started the engine, and turned to face the furious wind. Okay, wow, change of plan. The weather has totally overpowered us. It was not on the forecast, believe me, otherwise we would have never left. So we are turning back, back to the anchorage. It is exposed anchorage for the wind, but there's no swell. And that's absolutely fine. We had a bit of a... We did have an engagement in uh, Puerto Escondido, but hey, there's nothing we can do about it. So we pulled in the Genoa and we are returning back to our anchorage. It's never easy deciding to turn back, but in this case, I think we made the right decision. We're not far out of the anchorage and we got a real surprise how strong the winds were. So uh, I think we'll head back, drop the hook and stay comfortable until it blows over. I haven't seen anything like it, how, how suddenly it has increased from 20 knots to 40. Insane, and it didn't feel that good. I'm really pleased that we decided to come back. I'm gonna roast the chicken, make a mashed potato. Nice wintry food. You might have noticed by now that sailing Bohemia doesn't do 40 knots. Totally the best decision. I'm looking forward to a warm shower. As they say, you should be careful what you wish for. Wow. We've never had anything quite like that before. Um, I'm still looking at the weather forecast again that we got this morning and um, nothing more than 30 knot forecasts and that's just short gusts. Uh, we had 40 out there and uh, it was just carnage, it was insane. Most of the time we were sheltered by the island so we didn't get the full on swell and it's just such a good job we turned back when we did. Uh, I'm very glad to be back in a, in a sheltered anchorage again. Uh, nice warm cup of tea hot shower, got all the salt water off, and uh, I hear the galley is about to rustle at some cake. Aren't they? <laughs> yes sir, cake sir, straight away sir. It was great to stay warm and dry down below as the wind continued to howl through the anchorage outside. In fact, the captain was so relaxed that he overlooked the galley's mix-up on his cake order. Well, what a difference a day makes. Uh, everything in the cockpit, my navigation phone, the Dodger is still like covered in salt spray from yesterday's uh, debacle. Um, and today it's just flat calm like a mill pond. Um, so it's either 40 knots of wind or zero knots, it seems that we're gonna have to choose between. But I think we made the right choice. Uh, if we're lucky today, we should be able to motor sail and maybe in the afternoon, uh, we'll get some southeasterly winds from the opposite direction. Uh, this should actually be quite helpful. So hopefully uh, we'll have a lovely sail. Uh, if not, it should at least be a calm sail. So that's okay, we'll take that. And we are off again. I think we can all agree that the Sea of Cortez is a massive beast, which cannot be underestimated. Yesterday was just total carnage and uh, today nothing. It's like being on a lake. Uh, so luckily we only have about 18 miles to go and we are okay with motor sailing if the worst comes to the worst. So uh, it's gonna be nice and peaceful four hour passage until the engine dies and then it's not gonna be peaceful or relaxing at all. <laughs> us half a knot if we're lucky. Hopefully it's gonna pick up a little bit. Today's conditions make yesterday seem like a bad dream. Everything I touch is still like covered in salt and spray, which is the only sign that it ever happened. And obviously housekeeping hasn't had a time to get to it. <laughs> That's what he really means. This place is filthy. 
it's about time for housekeeping's annual performance report. That's why he's nervous. Feedback is a gift. That's right. I'm aiming for employee of the month again. I'm not even sure he's on track for most improved yet. Don't tell him. We eventually found some wind and had a pleasant short sail into Puerto Escondido. As we passed carefully through the narrow entrance channel, we were greeted to an enormous mooring field in the natural harbour. It turns out you should think twice before securing your boat to a buoy with two big black X's on it. Nothing bad happened, but later in the day we moved to a regular buoy. Puerto Escondido is a beautiful natural harbour and hurricane hole, protected from the weather on all sides. Hurricane protection is enhanced by the spectacular mountain backdrop, which helps to prevent strong Pacific winds from funneling through. As well as the mooring field, there is a small marina with shops, a restaurant and a swimming pool to cool off. Right, we are in Puerto Escondido on a mooring ball. Um, it's really nice here actually, I, I didn't expect this. Um, they do quite good deals for overnights uh, and for weekly stay as well. We're gonna only stay one night because uh, we are keen to uh, make progress south. Um, but yeah, it's uh, with the mooring ball for one dollar per foot. Um, we get access to the swimming pool and there is a fantastic pizza restaurant. So uh, that's on the agenda tonight. Since it's on birthday, we splashed out a bit, just for one night. Well, it's not bad birthday for the captain, is it? And here's to you. Cheers. Aren't I a lucky birthday boy? Look what I got. It's a second-hand Sailrite sewing machine. Uh, it's super heavy duty, so it should make light work of our sail repairs. We have a few extensive repairs to make on our Genoa and our mainsail. They need uh, a bit of restitching and some sun cover work. Uh, so our old sewing machine would really struggle, I think, to go through it. So uh, looking forward to trying it out. Really glad we managed to pick one up out here in the middle of nowhere. I just wonder where we're going to store that. It is really, really heavy, actually. Surprisingly heavy. So uh, my default option for stuff this bulky is just shove it in the lazarette and forget about it. But we're already kind of listing a little bit to the port side. So I'm going to have to find something heavy to move over if that goes in there. Maybe we put the first mate on the other side. How is your new toy? <laughs> Happy birthday to me! It's funny what gets us excited these days. Cruising ruins you for things like this. Correction, it's funny what gets him excited these days. <laughs> Do I look excited to you? He's excited on the inside but that's mainly because we're treating ourselves to a pizza later. See, now he's talking. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> that was easy. Come on, I want to go to the pool. Paid $36 for the night and I'm sitting here in a cockpit watching you sewing like a cursed princess. The curse will soon be lifted. Join us next time on Sailing Bohemia, where That's it. Ad -hook. <laughs> we leave the beautiful Puerto Escondido. And we're off. I'm done. Who's driving the boat? 
<laughs> and sail to the equally spectacular Isla Danzante. After a few technical difficulties getting in. Yeah, so we have about one boat length between our stern and the sticking rocks. We're almost on the shore with the anchors stretched out here. We wouldn't need the dinghy to go to the beach. We enjoy the island and continue our journey south. Special thanks in this episode go to our latest patrons for their generous contributions to the captain's birthday beer budget. Thank you to Ken from Idaho, who enjoys visiting the Mexican Riviera and sailing on big ships. And thank you to James, Eric and their Corgi Louie from San Diego, who love boating and visit Mexico often. Thank you all so much. And here's to you. Cheers. <laughs> chin chin. If you enjoyed this episode, then please don't forget to tell YouTube all about it by commenting, liking, and sharing. See you next time.